Hey everyone, it's Dave Cummings from Point Loma Nazarene University. This is Microbiology of Infectious Diseases. We're in part three of a six-part series on viruses. Introducing you to viruses, I want you to understand how different they are from cellular life forms, and I want you to understand uh, how they are physically built. So in the last video, we talked about their nucleic acid. We said that a, a virus really is just a nucleic acid, DNA or RNA, wrapped up in a protein coat. So we talked about single-stranded versus double-stranded. We talked about DNA versus RNA, and all those combinations are possible among viruses. So what I want to talk about today are the capsids themselves. The capsid is the protein shell that's wrapped around the, that contains the viral nucleic acid. And then related to that idea is symmetry, okay? The common shapes that we see. So some terms you're going to learn. You're going to learn the term capsid. You're going to learn the term capsomere, and then the combined term nucleocapsid that I defined earlier, but I want to make sure that it's clear here. And then we're going to look at the three main types of symmetry, helical, polyhedral, and complex. And then I want to introduce you to the bacteriophage because we're going to talk quite a bit about bacteriophage going forward. A lot of what we know about viruses comes from those phages, so I want to at least introduce them to you. All right, we talked about our nucleic acids already. Now we need a protein coat to protect it. What is that protein coat made of? It's, it's a bunch of repeating units of a protein, and those repeating units are called capsomeres. So you, uh, an individual capsomere is an entire protein. So think of a polymer of, of amino acids folded together into a shape. Now you take hundreds of those, and they naturally arrange sort of like... If you could imagine Lego pieces that had little magnets in just the right spot, everything snaps together into just the right orientation to form a little symmetrical shell that we call a capsid, and that's what protects the nucleic acid. So when you look at this image here of the mast adenovirus, and obviously it's not really blue and they're not on the surface of Mars here, that's all false coloring, but you can see a geometric shape and you can see lots of little dots making them up. Right, you see all those little dots on all of them? Those dots are the individual capsomeres. These are capsids. They've got a nucleic acid inside them, and they're made of capsomeres themselves. All right, so first symmetry I want you to be familiar with, in other words, the shape of a capsid, is helical. Now, when you think helical, you think twisty, coily, right? And then when you look at something like tobacco mosaic virus in this, this image here on the left, you see what looks like a big straight tube almost, right? You want to think of a helical capsid as being almost like a straw, and the nucleic acid is inside the straw. Some are straight like this one. Some are more bendy, squirrely, uh, twisty like we saw with Ebola. But you're thinking, how on earth is this helical? Imagine if I gave you a, a length of rope, and I said, build a tube out of this rope. And you would start by circling it, and circling it and circling it, stacking it on itself, right? Until what you had, as you stacked and stacked and stacked and stacked and stacked, was a tube, and the nucleic acid is inside that tube, okay? The fact that we've got this coiled polymer of protein subunits, of capsomeres, is where the term helical comes from. Sometimes people call this rod-shaped because when it's straight like TMV, it looks like a rod. Okay, so that's an example. Helical, not at all uncommon. Polyhedral, maybe you remember this from like 10th grade geometry or something, many-sided. Polyhedra can be things like cubes, for example, or pyramids. The most common polyhedron that we see in viruses is called the icosahedron, which is the 20-sided uh, triangular faces, right? If you have not looked that up, yet. Look up icosahedron online and you'll get a visual of what these icosahedra look like. There can be other polyhedra, but the icosahedron is the most common. And the icosahedron, in fact, is probably the most common capsid symmetry, period, at least among viruses that infect you and me. So this polyhedron, and specifically the icosahedron version of it, arguably the most common and most important capsid symmetry that we see. And so uh, we keep seeing these adeno and mast adenoviruses. These cause mild upper respiratory infections like the common cold. 
wanted to throw out another one there for you, though. HPV, human papillomavirus. Maybe you've heard of this before. Um, a papilloma is simply a wart, and so papillomaviruses cause warts. Specifically, human papillomavirus, though, causes genital warts. And those genital warts, especially in females, though to some degree in, in males, can actually lead to cancer. The most common cause of cervical cancer in women is this guy right here. That's an interesting thought because we have a vaccine for this. So put all that together. That means we have a common cancer that's vaccine preventable. That's a pretty amazing idea. A common cancer in women that's vaccine preventable. Anyway, that HPV is an example of an icosahedron where you'd have this 20-sided shell, and on the inside, you'd have all your nucleic acid all wound up inside there. And then the whole thing's going to have to somehow get inside your cells, and we'll talk about how that happens later. And then the final symmetry is what we call complex, and it's a combination of some kind of a polyhedron, and that would be the head, and the nucleic acid's going to be up there. But then we don't stop there. Instead, we add a helical region that we call a tail, and then a bunch of tail fibers. And these tail fibers are required for attachment to the host cell. Now, the vast majority, listen to this, the vast majority of complex viruses are bacteriophage. And at the same time, the vast majority of bacteriophage are complex. It's not a perfect 100% correlation, but it's really darn close. When we're talking phage, think complex symmetry. When we're talking complex symmetry, when it comes up at all, immediately your mind should go to phage. So what are phage? These are viruses that can only infect bacteria. These are going to become really important for us as we, uh, as we move forward and start thinking about uh, the life cycle of a virus. And you'll see why when we do that. Why else might we want to understand phage? Here's an example. right? If phage get inside bacteria, right? phage attach themselves those little lunar lander looking guys attach themselves to the surface of bacteria, inject their DNA, and by the way, majority of phage are double-stranded DNA viruses. There's a couple of weird examples that aren't, but most are. That phage DNA then, which is usually circular like a plasmid, is gonna get replicated and expressed. And then as the phage particles fill, uh, I'll just put a little asterisk for phage, as they fill the host cell, Eventually they fill it to capacity and they bust their way out so they can get out and go infect other cells, right? Think about using phage then as, uh, as an alternative therapy to something like antibiotics. What if we have a strain of bacteria that's antibiotic resistant, but we know what phage can infect it? Remember, phage only infect bacteria and usually only very specific bacteria. Then we could use them to selectively target pathogenic bacteria. They can't infect our cells, and they would kill very few of our normal flora, normal bacteria. So there's a, a whole branch of research right now in phage therapy looking at using these viruses as a way to fight bacterial infections. One other interesting example of using phage, and I don't have a slide for it, um, some researchers are looking at taking virus capsids, modifying these attachment, these tail fibers here, so that what they want to bind to is actually tumor cells. And then packaging, instead of up in the head putting a bunch of DNA in there, putting some kind of a, a chemotherapy drug. And now all of a sudden the chemotherapy drug isn't impacting the, the patient's entire body, trashing their liver and their brain cells and everything else. It doesn't get released until the phage specifically attaches to the tumor. Pretty remarkable. So we call this smart drug delivery. So there's a virus, phage therapy as a way of killing unwanted bacteria and infections. And there's also something called smart drug delivery that uh, we can use phage and other viruses for. And this is all still in the research stages, but I think within the next 10 years, we're going to see these as actual um, approved treatments for a variety of conditions. All right, let's summarize then our different capsid sym symmetries and what a capsid really is. So all viruses have to have a capsid, right? They all have to have 
DNA or RNA, and they all have to have a capsid because that's the, the basic definition of what a virus is. We're going to see that some have an envelope as well, but the bare minimum, got to have DNA or RNA plus a capsid. The capsids come in a variety, three, of different symmetries or shapes. And when it comes to these, what we call complex symmetries, we're almost exclusively talking about bacteriophage, real important group of viruses that actually infect bacteria. All right. Uh, combine what you just learned there with what you learned in the previous video on the different types of nucleic acids. And now we're going to move forward and we're going to look at a couple optional pieces, right? We said nucleic acids required, a capsid is required if you're going to be a virus. Let's talk about next the envelope and some possible enzymes. It turns out some viruses package and carry some enzymes with them. Let's see why they would want to do that.